very nice company I'm with it. And it shows color tags on it. Just flashed smart TV, so I just started. Oh, it was that, but I didn't hear it. Yeah, I didn't. Normally, hear you hear the when they're in the meeting. Well, it's it's looks like it's registering. Yeah, it shows that it. Everything's on. So we are on the record. This is the matter of uh, Angela Voss and Bobby Knight, cost number 20-3-178-23. Comes before the court today in an ongoing bench trial. Um, we deal with the first preliminary point. Um, and I want to make sure everybody's on the same page as what we went through yesterday. Um, and uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Knight, I appreciate your willingness to volunteer to work through everything with us on this um, and recognizing that it was purely your choice whether to work with us or not to work with us and you chose to work with us and, and work through with court administration and the health department to make sure that uh, that there was a comfort level of moving forward today. So I appreciate you doing yes, that. Yes, I've worked, this is my, what I've been doing since it began is working through so that we uh, I can proceed. Okay, <laughs> and so, um, couple of things. Uh, one, uh, working through the health department, the health department has deemed it um, uh, suitable, I guess is probably the best way of, of saying it, uh, to move forward today uh, with uh, Mr. Knight uh, wearing a mask uh, throughout today's proceedings. Um, and they analyzed it once they were able to dial in and find out exactly what the exposure was, uh, the timing of the exposure, which would have been six days ago now, and then uh, Mr. Knight voluntarily took a rapid test uh, yesterday, uh, which, um, as I heard, then it came back negative. Um, and so uh, all that combined, uh, the county health uh, instructed us um, that uh, we would be okay moving forward. Uh, one other point here, there is a sanitation bottle at each of your tables. Uh, one other thing that uh, we're going to ask you to do for both parties, and uh, myself included, um, as we are handling documents that we use a sanitation mm -hmm. uh, before we handle those uh, documents uh, each time. Okay, so that uh, when we're getting an exhibit, that exhibit's going back to the clerk, um, mm -hmm. and uh, then if it's being handed up here, handed to the parties, that we're doing the whole sanitation thing. And it's an abundance of caution is what we're we're exercising. Ms. Voss, um, you can choose whether to wear a mask today or not wear a mask. That is your choice. Um, I have. N95, uh, N95 uh, masks available. Uh, I think they have the regular yeah. mask as well. And if it's not here, we can have it here. So if you wish to have a mask uh, to wear uh, today, um, just say so and we will make sure that you have one. Do you wish to have one? Or? I, I don't, thank you. Okay. I've been vaccinated. Okay. And then the second part of this that um, we're moving forward today because we worked through uh, the protocols yesterday and, uh, and we're instructed by County Health that, that protocols that we are utilizing are appropriate, okay, and I know Mr. Knight's willingness to move forward today uh, on that as well. Ms. Voss, I am not forcing you to be here today, okay? This is your choice. If you say you're just not comfortable with this, we will stop right now, and then we will pick up uh, at a later time when that comfort level uh, comes back. So, what Thank is your you, comfort Mary. level? I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine being here. Um, unfortunately, uh, we've got a little bit of an issue again with the kids, perhaps COVID related in terms of their test was negative, but now their bus is out and the bus going to my house and the dad bus are both out. Oh my. And so, oh my. so they get out at two o'clock. My thinking is that I could possibly pick them up early, bring them home and come back during lunchtime or let them finish out the school day until 2 o'clock and 
just take that short break and then come back. Okay. Just in the night, you raised your hand and answered. Oh, I've got a question in cross examining from what she just stated. So go ahead. Oh, okay. But I, I, I so it looks like we have the scheduling is so. Sch scheduling issue we had the other day that was resolved, but it sounds like the backup to the resolution, the, the, the backup to the transportation is not available now. Okay. So um, we were to, okay. So in my recollection was that we would have needed to break at 2.30 to make that happen. Um, if the school day is shorter on Wednesdays, so that instead of getting out at 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. they get out at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Oh, yes, yeah, so it causes quite an issue. Okay. So at two o'clock. So at the latest that you would break is one thirty, which is when we would start up after our mm -hmm. new recess. And so if we just have extend our new recess to allow for that, do you feel comfortable then taking the, the children to your home and then coming back? And I then, do. Okay. So and then, what would be your estimated time that you'd be available? Would be like three? Um, yeah, r round trip. I think two thirty, um, maybe two forty-five. Okay, so maybe we would start back up at 2.45, and if you're a little bit late, we'll be a little bit late. Okay, so that's what we'll do there. Um, we are still working uh, to deal. We do have one um, potential criminal trial. We had two yesterday. Uh, one um, is not a potential this week. The other one is potential starting tomorrow morning. Um, and... Uh, Court administration is balancing um, another judicial officer and finding out whether another judge is able uh, to step in and handle that. Um, at this point, I don't have an answer on that, um, but I expect that I will have one later this morning on the potential of moving tomorrow and or Friday um, on uh, hopefully completing this matter if we don't get done today. So, okay. Any other preliminary issues that either party wishes to address at this time? Ms. Black? No, Your Honor. Mr. Knight? No, sir. Okay. So, um, when we uh, were last uh, before the court in this matter, um, Mr. Knight, you were cross-examining Ms. Black. So, um, why don't you go ahead and continue? And, and I'm going to also ask you that um, I, I always talk to Ms. Voss about raising the volume of her discussion. Well, today, we'll, I'll be looking to you to do the same thing because I can't see your lips today. So I, Yeah, I, uh, and it muffles it anyway. Exactly. So I appreciate if you just uh, speak up. Okay, so go ahead. All right. Let's start out with this one. Ms. Voss. Did you receive two test kits from Pioneer School District yesterday morning? Yes, I did. Did you, at what time did you administer these tests? I had to check my emails to be certain. Was it administered before we had the 9 o'clock hearing in the morning? No. Was it administered after the 9 o'clock hearing? Yes. Didn't you ask... Ask the judge yesterday about the, doing the tests on the children, and wasn't it stated by uh, the court that that's a family decision between the parents? I believe there was something along that line. Okay. Did you talk to Mr. Knight yesterday or today about administering the test of COVID to the children? I believe I copied you in the email to the principal. You believe you did? Yes. I don't did not see any emails from the from you to the principal. So Okay. Next question. Miss Voss, does Mr. Knight's medical decision making abilities um, not exist whenever you have the children? speak up a little bit. No, your decision making doesn't cease. Okay. 
do you believe Mr. Knight has the right as everybody else to be treated equally? I do. If you were running late for a friend, would you wait until they were at the posi a place of meeting to inform them that you're running late? Or would you do that before they went to that place of meeting? I suppose it would depend on the circumstances. Okay. I'm going to ask you a series of yes and no questions. Did we make an agreement on Friday due to the bus issues to transfer the children onto bus 318? Yes. Was this at your suggestion? I believe that was Friday. Um, On Friday, yes. It, yes. <laughs> Is it true that you set up a bus route to your home very recently? It's a yes or no question. No, I didn't set the Okay. Route. Did you have the children placed on the route for that bus route? I had the children placed on the bus. Okay. <clears throat> Did we make an agreement on that day to meet at Deer Creek Store at 6 p.m.? No. no. Did we stand here in court and tell the judge, after he asked us, if we had made an agreement on the bus? Did we speak to the judge at that time? We spoke to the judge. I don't recall if the word was agreement or we're going to make arrangements. But the fact of 6 p.m. of meeting was stated in court on that day? I don't recall. You suggested 6 p.m. I asked if I could feed them. You said that was That was fine. a yes or no question, ma'am. I did not ask you to explain nothing. I'm asking yes or no. Was there a 6 p.m. agreement at the court and I stated it to the judge and we moved on? That's not my recollection. Okay. When Mr. Knight arrived at the Deer Creek store at 6 p.m. on Friday and sent you a text at five minutes after 6, what was your reply? I don't recall. I'd have to look. What time did you transfer the children to Mr. Knight at the Deer Creek store? I believe it was 7. So are you saying that Mr. Knight and you did not make an agreement to transfer the bu uh, kids to bus 318 and me and you transfer them back to me on my day at 6 p.m. at Deer Creek Store. You're saying we did not make that agreement. That's correct. We did not make that agreement. So, is it courteous to, would it have been courteous to call Mr. Knight before 6 p.m. before he arrived there for the meeting to say, hey, I started dinner for the children. It's going to be running late. Would that have been a courteous thing to do? It was my understanding that you had agreed to allow me to feed the children. It was not my understanding that you had agreed on a time. It was my understanding that I would let you know when we're getting close to being done with dinner and feed you a time. Was this a discussed on that day, in that more on that morning, was any of that just that you just said discussed on that day? The first part was. Which part was that? The you simply asked if you could feed the children dinner. Is that not Judge, true? Let me pull it. You you said okay. which part was that, and then you went on to something else. So let her answer the question. As as I previously stated, you asked. About six o'clock, I asked if I could feed them. You said I could, and it was not fully resolved or agreed as to when. And so, objection, Your Honor. Miss Boss is lying. 
We stated here oh, in front oh, of the oh, court. Oh, 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 oh. You don't, if you don't object, you have your opportunity to testify. Okay. Okay. And so um, she answers the question to the best of her recollection, and then we move on to the next question. And then if you if you have a different um, answer, then or another point, you have an opportunity to testify and, and present that. Okay. Ms. Foss, isn't it true that you told Mr. Knight that you were very proud of your ability to lie? No. You say that with a laugh, Ms. Foss. Is that because it's true? No. Oh. It's absurd. Ms. Mm. Foss, do you lie? I think everyone lies to some degree. I do my best. <clears throat> do you believe if you make it your truth it's not a lie I'm not sure what you're attempting to say there can you please rephrase if it is convenient for you it is not a lie is yes. this true On Friday, we were uh, before uh, we ended. We was discussing um, how I had done kind things and gestures for you, but you stated I've only given you three gifts in my entire uh, our entire relationship. Um, so, would you say uh, state that the agreed Agreement on Friday to transfer the kids to the bus to continue this trial would have been a kind gesture going towards co-parenting? in front of your court as an audience, possibly. Um, I think the, the agreement was made publicly for a reason. Uh, that's what you're calling So agreement. you're agreeing with the agreement? Uh, no, I'm not saying. What you're calling an agreement, um, the gesture was public. And it falls under the previously described grandstanding that I mentioned. It is to both of our benefit to get this accomplished as quickly as possible. And it's in our children's best interest, no less. <clears throat> Do you think it is beneficial to co-parenting to not give the courtesy of a call to the father when someone is running late? always courteous to let people know when there is a problem as soon as it's convenient. Um, sometimes that doesn't work out that well if you're driving, for example. I don't know really just to text someone that you're going to be there in a couple of minutes is not convenient or practical. And simply showing up in five minutes is the best you can do, but uh, yes, I try to be considerate. Were you considerate on Friday evening at 6 p.m.? Uh, objection. On the day that hold you... Up, hold up, there's an objection. What's the objection? I'm, I'm not sure how going over this ask and answer again and again is relevant to anything. And the it was ask and answer because you did ask about whether it was courteous to call before 6 o'clock. Okay. And you started going down the courteous road again and she already answered that one. Okay. So. Okay. Ms. Voss, do you know what the word empathy means? Absolutely. Do you feel you have empathy? I do. Do you feel you have empathy for Mr. Knight? I do. 
did you have empathy for Mr. Knight the day that his, or the week that his brother had killed himself and you filed court paperwork trying to strip him of his children? You misrepresented facts. I'm sorry. Answer Objection. my question. Did you have uh, empathy? Mischaracterization of facts. characterization of facts you can explain your beliefs okay in your in your answer thank you Alan I when I learned that your brother had completed suicide 10 days after Hayden had attempted suicide I tried my very best to show as much empathy as possible I did objection not your honor She's making time statements that are not co uh, correct. Um, I don't know the objection to that. Um, okay. Well, relevant. Can, she can answer how she believes things are. Um, you can continue to ask her um, to do what you think is appropriate. Um, and then if you have a different understanding of things, you'll have that opportunity to testify. Okay. So, thank you. And I recognize that and it's, it's more than often. It's consistently in front of this court, especially in these types of cases. Perspectives and perspectives are going to be different. And one party is going to think that the other party is just totally telling something that's totally incorrect. The other party is going to say the, the same thing about the other party. It's the nature of things. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to let Ms. Uh, Foss continue the answer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I did not file paperwork trying to strip the children from you, as you characterized. Um, within the timeline that you indicated. I filed a petition to modify the parenting plan on October 25th, 2018. As far as I know, um, your brother completed suicide 10 days after Hayden attempted suicide. And I, as far as I recall, Hayden's attempt was September 28th or 29th. I could have the date wrong, but I remember 10 days after. Um, and so no, my petition was not intended to strip the children from you. I went to the court trying to get a protection order that would allow me to get Hayden counseling. And I was informed that I couldn't simply ask for that sort of order without filing a petition to modify. And so I filed paperwork for the instructions that were given Certainly I was concerned that your decision making was driving our children into the ground. And so yes, something needed to change. So you had filed your petition on October 25th. How come Mr. Knight did not hear about that until after his brother had committed suicide? As I recall, your brother completed suicide 10 days after Hayden attempted suicide in late September, which would have made um, your brother Michael's suicide early October. And then and you filed in October. Okay. on the 25th. Okay. So, the you thought being a uh, filing a court document and fi uh, putting the stress of court on Mr. Knight shortly after a family member had committed suicide. You feel that was empathy? No, I think everything I did prior to having to file the paperwork showed empathy in that I understood you had other things to attend to. Your priorities shifted naturally from Hayden to that other situation. And so all of the attempts and offers to work with you and your wife to get Hayden into counseling were an act of empathy so that you wouldn't have one more thing to deal with. Ms. Foss, you're indicating that you, it sounds to me like you're indicating that you knew Mr. N uh, <coughs> that my brother was going to commit suicide, so you were empathetic before he did so. Is that what you just testified to? No, that's not what I said. That's what it sounded like to me. Sorry, no okay. step, my, take back my statement. questions. Okay. Ms. Voss, this is going to be a hard one. 
before you ask that question. Um, this is Judge Goodell. This is the Mason County Superior Court. I did note that there's an observer in um, the Zoom session, and which is fine. It's an open court. I just want to make sure the observer is aware that this is the uh, Voss and Knight uh, uh, trial uh, that is going on in this courtroom. Um, I have you muted, and your video is to remain on. Okay, Mr. Knight, go ahead. Okay. I don't like the fact I have to go here, but I'm going to. When did your mother pass away? Objection, Your Honor, please. It refers to state of mind. I'm sorry? It will re reflect state of mind. I asked her when her mother passed away. This will re uh, show state of mind on Miss Voss on what she has done since then. I'm going to give you a little latitude on this, um, and uh, so um, I'm not going to ask for an offer of proof yet. Um, I'll ask for, I'll give you a little bit of latitude, and uh, then at some point, before we get too far down this path, I might want to ask for an offer of proof. I'm not going to go real far down this path. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of latitude. Then answer the question. My mother passed away the day before her 68th birthday on July 2nd, 2018. Okay. Was that hard for you? Of course. Were you afraid Mr. Knight was going to file court paperwork on you when that happened? Objection, Your Honor, please. The relevance is she had made a statement to me that she thought I was, uh, to people that I she thought I was going to attack her when her mom died, when she was at the lowest point in her life, but I didn't. But yet she did on me. That's an argument that you wish to make. Whether she was fearful that you would do that is of no consequence. Um, I, I okay. have. But you, establishing that she passed, that, that, that mom passed, um, and that there wasn't a filing, you can make the argument in closing. I don't know why her Projection, Your Honor. Psychological projection from a person who is in fear that I would do something to her and then I don't do it and she turns around and does it to me. She's projecting, has been projecting her issues onto me for 13 years. And that is what's going on. She has a lot of fears and she blames them on me and everyone I'm else. I'm not going to allow you to go there without foundation. You need somebody else to testify to yeah. create that. To create yeah. that whole yeah, I missed out on that with her psychologist. Okay. So, sister. Miss Voss, do you know the terminology in psychology of triggers? We have discussed it on Chloe. I am discussing this with you. make it a little easier. Um, I don't remember exactly what exhibit your psychological evaluation is, uh, most recent one was in. Um, would that be exhibit nine, I think it is? Are you asking me? Yeah, if, ma'am, yes. 
Can you ex tell me which e uh, exhibit is your most recent mental health evaluation? I believe it was admitted under the 300s. Three thirty. May I get three thirty, please? And, uh, Mr. Knight, before touching that document, thank you. So in your evaluation here, Ms. Voss, I see my name in here quite a lot. On here it states on page two, Mr. Sight Saints states, I think she needs help myself. Um, do you believe that Mr. Knight thinks that you need help? I believe that, yeah, she is at the Bradbury place. Okay. Do you, you yourself feel like you need some help in the manner uh, uh, concerning uh, the family conflict? Do you feel like you need help for any other issues that you may have? I seek out the um, services of Dr. Langer for a number of reasons. Parental conflict is one. There are other things. Um, Objection, Your Honor. He stated that he only treated her for anxiety. She can answer the question as she thinks is appropriate. You have okay, thank again, you. you're talking argument now, so okay. Um, as he testified and as I testified, um, we talked about other things like how do I deal with this issue or that issue with the children um, when I don't have access to service providers um, to get my questions answered. Um, Dr. Langer is not the only source of information I look to. I have previously testified family education and support services offers a number of classes and I take those classes. I enjoy the learning of love learning. And so yes, I seek help um, in various areas. Do you think Mr. Knight seeks help? So, as much as Mr. Knight's name is in here, would you classify Mr. Knight as triggering you or being your trigger? I'm not sure how to differentiate 
the truth, I think you intentionally, you have, it's from the five million who, you have gotten a rise, literally an erection, out of causing you fear and pain um, the entire time I've known you. Okay. So you're saying Mr. Knight is the trigger or triggers you? I would like to, if you could separate these two for me. I, I'm afraid I can't parse out that conveniently for you. You intentionally trigger me. You absent the history you as a person just standing there are not triggering it is the history that is embedded in our relationship that is yeah I'm sorry I can't parse on that go ahead so you're saying just by looking at me your emotions are triggered that's not what I said. So isn't triggering is when your emotions trigger in an uncontrollable fashion from either a phrase or an action? I believe that was my prior testimony. It could be a frown, a smile, it could be anything that triggers my way. Um, could be good or bad. And then back to the question, is, can a person be a trigger? I believe so. A person can act as a trigger. Just being a person can be triggering. Does Mr. Knight control your emotions? No. I just think he enjoys playing with them. So... A trigger appears to be a point where you would not have any control over your own emotions. Is this a, a trigger? No, not necessarily. Um, I have learned through the years to control my emotions and feel I have the emotional equivalent of a breath canal. And that is hard for me to even access feelings about you when I have to deal with the reality of whatever chaos you just created and my mind is on problem solving I can't afford to indulge my feelings um, that's not a luxury I have so you saying you don't have feelings at this moment I do have feelings I'm working hard to control them but yeah I have feelings is and again, you are in full control of your own feelings? Full is perhaps a little far. I, I do my best. Okay. If you did better with controlling your feelings, do you feel the need, would you feel the need to still see Dr. Langer? <laughs> yes, as long as I have to deal with you, I will need to see Dr. Langer every day. So you provided all the information yourself to for this psychological evaluation, correct? That's an objection. This was asked and answered over many hours of testimony in terms of collateral. Not your testimony, oh. cross examination. He okay. was able to again. Okay. He was able to develop whatever okay. evidence he wishes to develop. Um, no, I did not provide Dr. Langer with all the information. You did not. Did you provide this psychologist, Rachel Bellatar, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Did you provide her solely, you were the only one solely providing her with information other than her phone calls? No. Do explain, please. She indicates in her report that she reached out to Dr. Epstein, Dr. Langer, and reviewed his case notes and um, letters and records that he had on file as well. Okay. 
Did Dr. Langer testify that you were the only one to provide him with that information? No. He didn't? On the page nine, can you read the first paragraph of the summary? Ms. Voss was cooperative and forthright during the assessment process. Ms. Voss did not meet the criteria for a full mental health diagnosis. Her recent assessment, as indicated by the PAI Rule Out Personality Disorder (NOS) Mixed Personality Disorder with paranoid features. This indicates that she has some traits and not a full diagnosis. These traits are more likely due to Mr. Knight making false allegations towards her and withholding information from her regarding the children. Mr. Knight, as indicated above, has a history of dismissing her concerns regarding the children and communicates with her in a demeaning way, as indicated in the emails provided for this assessment. When Ms. Voss feels her concerns are not being heard, her communication style may come across as controlling. However, this does not mean that her con concerns should be rejected or are not valid. Okay. Did you provide these emails to her? I did. There were also um, a stack of emails that I had provided to Dr. Langer in my communications with the school. And so, you're the one who had stated to to your psychologist that Mr. Knight's history of doing all of this and this was your perception. Uh, was this not your perception of what Mr. Knight was doing, what you were reporting to your uh, psychologist? I'm going to have to ask you to restate the question just to clarify which psychologist. Rachel Jobes here is now a psychologist. Dr. Langer is now a psych also a psychologist. Oh, cool. Thanks for reminding me. Was Miss Delacour a psychologist when she did this psych uh, this evaluation on you? No, nope, I believe this was the last leg of her being here. Doctor. And this was and she was studying under Dr. Langer, wasn't she? Uh, no, I don't believe she was studying under him. I believe he was um, I, I'm not sure how exactly that works, but he was overseeing her final clinicals or something of the sort. I'm, I, I'm not, again, I'm not certain how that all works. So, that would be, um, let's turn that around. She was doing her, oh, name of it. Anyway, it appears that your testimony stating that this was part of her um, final stuff to get her doctorate. Um, and Dr. Linger was basically the one who was overseeing it. Wouldn't you think that somebody who's doing this would actually follow what the teacher had just stated himself? Uh, I don't recall characterizing Dr. Linger. As a teacher, he was, um, I think, Dr. Delacour rendered her own opinions based on the information available to her, as did Dr. Langer. And you, okay, so we flipped all that part of the question. Ms. Voss, isn't it true that it's unusual to see other people in a psychological evaluation indicated as the reason for somebody's psychological issue? I can't say that I've read that many psychological evaluations, but um, in every one that I have read, um, other party and conflict and co-parenting has, has been mentioned in, in ours, at least, um, by every source, and 
to some degree with pointed criticism and others with less. How would it feel, Miss Voss, if I went and had a mental evaluation done and the conclusion came out that Miss Voss is the reason why Mr. Knight is the way he is? How would that make you feel? I, I would like to laugh. Mm. Would it be a joke? I don't know. Would it be a joke to you? Such an evaluation, um, if it existed, I, I would question uh, the source. I would press question the veracity, the process, whether or not collateral, you know, just as you're scrutinizing this, um, I too scrutinized your past evaluations and those evaluations where I was afforded the opportunity to, to provide collateral context are very different than Dr. McCollum's, for example, where I was not permitted to provide any information about what you're doing in that evaluation. So the absence of collaterals is a, definitely a marked indicator. So if you were to provide me such an evaluation regarding yourself, I would question those very same things. Okay. Well, you mentioned Dr. McCollum that he didn't get collateral uh, information. Isn't it true, Miss Voss, that during that, that it took six months for that Dr. McCollum's evaluation to be sent to the courts because you refused to stop providing paperwork to him? Um, I believe he wrote something to that regard, which is not at Would all. Would that be considered colla uh, collateral information being? given by the plaintiff. I assented to give him collateral information when he gestured, this is how much paperwork I normally get in cases like this. Go ahead and give me more. Um, I, I should have known he was baiting me there. Uh, I attempted to provide collateral information and he indicated in his, in his report that he did not consider any of it. But you provided it to him. I attempted to. You had the opportunity to give your information that you ch well, wanted seen to the psychologist for my evaluation. I, Is that I correct? I don't think I would characterize it as an opportunity if he was absolutely not going to consider it. I, I think it was a, an, a gesture that was... Did that stop you from providing it to him and can, and giving it to him every time you feel felt the need? I, I, I gave him what he asked for at one time. Mm. You were stating... What he implied would be appropriate. Um, his his uh, report characterized it very differently. So you just testified that you never, uh, that Dr. McCollum made his evaluation of Mr. Knight without any collateral information, but then you just sta uh, stated here that you gave him. Would that be considered a lie or misspeaking? I, I, I think you're misrepresenting what I said. I didn't say he didn't get any collateral information. He did not get collateral information from me about you. Did your attorney at the time provide Dr. McCollum with collateral information uh, that was required so that he could do an, a, a forensic evaluation for a dependency hearing? I don't recall that there was collateral information. I think it was a simple question and answer format that we were both provided about ourselves, our history, and the dependency action. Do you believe that Dr. McCollum did everything by the book that is necessary to complete an evaluation on both parents for the purpose of a dependency hearing? I believe he did exactly what he was told to do. Do you believe that a professional psychologist can be told 
how to do his job? In this instance, yes. I didn't ask for the because. Uh, in this instance, yes. Your Honor, objection. Because. Yeah, I didn't ask the a question. The question wasn't uh, clarified. The, the response was not elicited, sustained. Go ahead. All right, I would like exhibit, I guess it would be considered 313. Ms. Voss, can you tell me what exhibit you have in your hand? This is our current parenting plan. Thank you. Can you turn to page 12 of the parenting plan? No, I cannot. I only have four pages. Has that one been? It is the correct plan. Is this missing pages? It, that's correct. Just the first four pages is all I have. Four of 14. Okay, so we will, because I know that it had all the pages at one point, last yes. time we testified on it. So yeah. we addressed it. So um, do both parties have a copy of the parenting plan? just occurred to me, um, for the majority of our documents, we all have a bench copy, okay? Mm -hmm. So unless there's a specific need to pull the actual exhibit. So that would be safer. It would probably be a better choice if we just use our bench copies. If there is a question from any party that whether the bench co pop copy is accurate, because remember you have all those A, Bs, and Cs, right. uh, we will need to pull the, pull the document then. But I think at this juncture, um, this just use our bench copies unless it poses an issue, okay? And that way we don't have to keep on cleaning our hands. And right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they Thank get you. dried out pretty quickly doing that. Yes, they need it for sure. Okay, we got 313 up? I do. Okay, okay page 12. Um, the single paired, uh, the single 
line from uh, up from the bottom, the second paragraph, I guess you'd call that, where it says any follow-up questions by Miss Boss must be directed to the provider and not to Mr. Knight. Do you understand that statement, Miss Voss? I do. Can you explain that statement to me? The sentence comes in the communication section and um, it follows the requirement for you to post appointments to the Our Family Wizard calendar and to note do that within 24 hours of making an appointment and to provide um, the after visit summaries um, within 24 hours of the appointment and any follow-up questions are to be directed to the provider which is makes sense in some instances. It does not make sense in other instances. So, <clears throat> would it be a reasonable expectation by Mr. Knight to believe that after he has posted on Our Family Wizard what he has, that you should be able to get any and all information needed without harassing, intimidating, or bullying Mr. Knight for this. Um, this does not um, work well when a question arises um, and you fail to provide me the documentation as required. You fail, fail to inform me of appointments as required you provide misleading inaccurate information on the calendar conflicting statements in messages and you don't clarify you know, there are a thousand instances in which I need information from you um, for example Miss Voss next question when you feel that something in the parenting plan isn't working the way you think it should do you dismiss it and do what you want to do? No. Ms. Voss, during this trial, how many times have you sat here and stated to the courts that Mr. Knight just don't give me the information I would need in, to satisfy me? Have I testified that you do not provide the information as required? I have testified as to that. How many times? I don't know. But everything I think I re remember what you just said, um, but your characterization was not accurate. So, Ms. Voss, if these two names were reversed, Would you provide Mr. Knight with absolutely everything he asked for? Likely not everything you asked for. You would likely ask for things beyond what is reasonable or prudent. Or I would do my best to post the appointment as required within 24 hours of setting in as required on the calendar as required. And I would do my best to provide you the follow-up summaries as required, as I have done in the couple of instances where you have written okay. authorization is your to best bring the children to the doctors, and I provided that information within 24 hours. Is your best satisfy, uh, satisfactory when you're providing information? My best is my best. Your best is your best, and it should be satisfactory, should it not? If a person is not satisfied with what I have done, I believe it would be incumbent upon the person to specify, you know, there's this other piece of information I didn't get. Can you please 
answer. I, I think what we both see as our best is different. Do you believe your best supersedes Mr. Knight's best? Objection. I don't even know how to characterize the objections, the, the words like it enhanced. If you could answer this question. I, th I think he said, he's, is your, do you believe your best supersedes Mr. Knight's best? And I, I don't understand your question. Um, please. You just please testified that you would do your best to do everything you can to satisfy this how you explained it. Yeah. Is your best better than Mr. Knight's best? Is it uh, more... Are you referring to how you have, um, have or you know, as you testified, how you have not complied with this? It's no, I'm asking the fact that you said you would do your best. And I would. Mr. Knight is doing his best. Is your best better than Mr. Knight's best? In uh, your you comparison... The assertion that you are doing your best, I believe, is as backwards as possible. I believe you are doing your best to cause as much frustration as possible in every communication, in every action you've taken. I, I think our my best would be a good faith effort. Your best is something very different. Different from a good faith effort? Yes. You, so you don't see Mr. Knight ever doing any good faith efforts? Again, why, why the exaggeration ever anything? Um, I think when you put your mind to something, you absolutely achieve it. And whether you put your mind to causing our children to wish they were dead or put your mind to fixing a truck, whatever you decide you're going to do, you're going to accomplish it. question was, do you think your best is better than Mr. Knight's best? And again, we're talking apples and oranges. The, the question's been asked and answered. Okay. <clears throat> do, mis do you know if Mr. Knight has fears? I'm sorry, if you could. Mr. If Mr. Knight has fears. Do I know if he fears? I I would imagine that you do, but again, I'm speculating. Yeah, actually, no, I, I do recall you telling me at one point in time that you were more afraid. So you do believe Mr. Knight has fears? I, I think every human has fears, and yes, a human has some. Are Mr. Knight's fears just as valid as your fears? Everyone has a right to their own feelings. Is, is there a basis? That's a different story. So if Mr. Knight had a fear and he wanted to impose what he thought to satisfy his fear upon you, would you accept that? I, I'm afraid you're going to have to be a little bit more specific. Okay. Let's say Mr. Knight has a fear. To a general fear. Of? But it doesn't matter. Of the children being harmed. Let's put it that way. He has a fear of the children being harmed. And he feels to satisfy his fears and his beliefs that you are required to do something. Is it in Mr. Knight's authority to impose his fears on you to make you change your actions? I'm sorry, but you are muddling so many different concepts that I cannot track your question. Can you please rephrase? Okay. If Mr. Knight has a fear of the, for the safety of the children, and to satisfy his fear for himself, he is trying to impose upon you to do something that you don't agree on. Does he have that right to impose, uh, make you do something just because he has a fear? Are you referring to 
team, you can write to me with a parenting plan or you write to the human being or I, I need you to be a little bit more specific in your question. If Mr. Knight was imposing upon you to change an action because his fear was that you were doing something that was endangering the children. Would it be okay for Mr. Knight to force you to change what you were doing because of his fear? You keep, I'm sorry, I, I really am trying to track whatever question you're asking, but there are so many elements of it I don't understand. Impose upon you, can you, I, what does that look like? I, if I were to put a motion in court stating that my fears feel that you have done something wrong and I want you to change how you were doing that, so I'm going to make the court impose upon you a ruling to make you do it the way I want you to do it because I have a fear. Would that be appropriate in your book? For you. I'm sorry. I, I can't answer your question. I, I don't understand it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Then I did that. Did that. Did that. Your Honor, all of the, uh, of the Consejo counselings, I do believe, have been submitted or as evidence. Uh, Which exhibit number are you looking at? Um, well, they're, they were put in pretty much in bulk. Um, Ms. Bosk. There is Consejo counseling records in 341. Okay, these are Consejo records for Chloe on this one here. And this was in 341. Yes, this is 341 that I'm looking at. And 341 okay. has been admitted. Okay. So there's a few things in 341 that I wanted to touch on. able to locate 341 I was, yeah. okay. okay I would like to go to page 29 of 355 indicated under the 904s are you there Ms. Boss? Mm -hmm. Um, can you identify what this page is, Ms. Boss? 
Um, this is a record regarding uh, rice from Linnell Sander, dated 421-20. Okay. And then, Miss Vo uh, Voss, in this here, doesn't this uh, have content about um, an incident where Chloe had gotten spanked or had been spanked? Yes. Was this written by um, the entity known as Alexander? Um, Brogan, I believe, is their name, and yes. Okay. So in here, it, there's a discussion point. Uh, let me see here. Um, where it's talking, a second paragraph, where it's talking about Chloe's uh, tests, extremely high in math, and, Ma, and then it goes on to say, according to Dad, Mom keeps telling her that she has a learning disorder. Do you see that one? Can you, can you point to... Where, and there's a second it? line in the second paragraph, uh, towards the end... Um, it actually starts in the middle. It says, according to Dad, Mom keeps telling her that she has a learning disorder. Yeah, I'm sorry. What was the that? I'm not that would be in the uh, content. Oh, line. I, I do see. It's under content. Okay. Or second okay. paragraph. Okay. Yes. I found it. Okay. So there's a, a numerous amount of stuff happening at this time in Chloe's life, wasn't it? She was being tested for at the school uh, for um, any di learning disorders due to mi uh, Miss or uh, the entity of Alexander refer uh, suggesting that she may have had ADHD. So we had just done a big test at school, hadn't we? That is not the impetus back on your call. Okay, but this happened. Could I? Okay. Could I state that this occurred after that testing? The testing was conducted or completed in, I believe, January. So, yes, this was after. After the testing. Okay. Do you think that Chloe has a learning disorder? If you mean learning disability, um, I believe that the test, um, the test results indicated that in order to be diagnosed with a learning disability, um, the student would need to achieve a score of 88 or lower, and by that criteria, the score of 82 met um, their definition of yes, this ch child has a learning disability. On tests, if portions aren't filled out, aren't they marked as incorrect? On that test, I'm, I'm sure that they had a, adapted protocols for um, things that were skipped, or I, I so I can't be certain how it was scored. Isn't it true that Chloe only answered a few questions in the math section? I'd have to go back and look at it, but as I recall. Um, that they didn't answer. I'm not sure the portion of. Okay. And so here, this is dealing with a bunch of things, um, disciplinary issues, um, testing. Um, wouldn't you say that at this time, Chloe was extremely stressed out? Okay. 
Okay, on page 58 of 355 in the same exhibit. You said 58? 58, page 58 of 355 in the same exhibit. It is about center. It would be dated 10, 10, 19. On page 57 is the beginning, it appears. Or no, it's 10, 1, 19. Excuse me on that one because they were printed off. Okay. So on Fit page 57 and on 10119, I want to discuss on page 58 of the 355 and showing it uh, ER 904 slash 28, page 58 of 355, or at the bottom 42 of 43. But those do not seem to be consistent. Fifty eight to three fifty five. Okay, yes. Miss Boss, can you identify the top half of this page here, which indicates, I do believe, on page fifty seven that this is for Chloe Knight, done by Lena on ten one nineteen. The following page is indicating at the top of uh, 72420 for some reason, but at the uh, and then the next appointment at the bottom of that says 103 of 19. So the section here for content, are you following where I'm talking about the There's first paragraph? There's a little bit of um, other things I, I see okay. on page 57 of 355 at the bottom. It's Session information. Um, yeah. Dated 10, 1, 19. Then the following page, I see a top half of the page. Um, the signature, uh, Lena Alexander. Um, under cat note and content at the top of the page. Then before that, it says under content, where it says we received a call from uh, dad that Chloe had threatened to commit suicide at school. Yes, I see that. Was it commonplace, is it commonplace for Chloe slash Rice to threaten suicide at school? No. Um, by dad calling Consejo Counseling, the counselor that is seeing, was a therapist that was seeing Chloe at that time, would that uh, be an appropriate Decision make uh, made by the father. If you're calling them, sure. Calling me would have been nice too. So, isn't it true that when Chloe on When Chloe, when you first took Chloe to Seattle Children's for the first time for her, as you stated, her suicidal ideologies, isn't it true that Mr. Knight then contacted Consejo Counseling and increased the therapy sessions through Consejo from once a month to four times a month for both children? Again, you're muddling so many things in a question. Um, 
first part of that suicidal ideology, again, I've not ever testified about suicidal ideology. It was suicidal ideation, but thinking or talking or writing about suicide. Um, and after that, I'm sorry, there were so many assertions that I, I couldn't track it all. Can you please rephrase? Isn't it true that Mr. Knight increased Chloe and Hayden's therapy sessions at Consejo Counseling from once a month to four times a month when Chloe had threatened to commit suicide? That is not my recollection. I don't know that that's what the record states either. I believe they were getting counseling in school every week. Those children. Is your beliefs always correct? No, but my beliefs are my beliefs based on the information available. Okay. I have been wrong. So, as somebody looks through the counseling sessions at Consejo, I believe that they, do you th believe that they will be able to see that there had been an increase in uh, the clients seeing the therapist? In order to answer that, I'm going to have to look back at my notes. When I had counted every appointment, frequency, etc. And so I'm seeing two, three times a month prior to that. And increased um, from 10-1, we've got 10-9, 10-14, 10-16, 10-23, So certainly there was an uptick, but I'm sorry, one of those was to the MOE program. So you were you are stating that there was a, uh, it will indicate that there was an uptick in the amount of counseling sessions the children had was receiving from Consejo Counseling. It appears that way. Okay. I'm going to go, I don't know if this is an assumption or what, but. Why don't, we, why don't we stop right there before. I'm not, we'll yeah, I'm not going to go to a question. I'm going to make a statement. If I can. Okay. Okay. Go, go I'm ahead. assuming that since these are in, in, uh, put in as evidence that, and they are medical records in 904s that they speak for themselves and you will be able to look through these and I can move on or do I need to hit every single page in this to make my point on what we are lo uh, looking at? Okay, two parts here, okay? So one, you're eliciting evidence. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what they're questioning is they're doing. This is already evidence. Right. So do you need to elicit anything that's written in here? Not necessarily. If you want to have you know, questions of this witness about something in here, that would be okay. certainly appropriate. In your closing argument, you can pull up any piece of evidence or any testimony, and you can argue around it. Okay. So you can point things out if you wish. Okay. Um, but as I indicated to everybody, I read everything that comes in. And right. Closing, so and you know. out of time, I'm trying to figure out how much I need to do to save time and still get my stuff in. You, you, need, to, you need to create a record. Okay. Because in closing argument, you cannot give me evidence. Okay. Okay. So if you are going to refer to a such and such a date, this record says blah, blah, blah. If that's the only reason that you're asking the, the witness for that, it's not necessary. If you want to know what the witness's recollection around that or any number of things, then that's a to truly a, a appropriate. Okay. I'm not going to limit your uh, examination, though. Okay. Um, and so, um, I was just trying to figure out how to speed right, it up. Sometimes an objection is the document speaks for itself. Right. Okay. And so... It does. It okay. does. That's what. But if I'm you want more than what's in the document, you need to ask. Otherwise, I don't know about it. You can't right. raise more than the document in closing okay. argument unless you have asked. Okay. So. So. I hit all my tags. That was a good question, and so we're going to uh, stop right now for uh, our morning recess. We'll start back up at ten, ten forty-seven. I'll be precise. <laughs> <laughs>
Would you like to return the documents so we can leave, or do you want me to do my can? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm.